Okay, I'm just gonna go over real quick, making some string puffs to go on your string. Um, there's, normally when you see me, I'm shooting these right here, which is like paracord, um, or I'm just shooting like the beaver ball. Those are you can buy, I don't know how to make these, but what I do have to know how to make is the paracord or just the yarn. Um, ideally, I think you want better quality yarn the better off you're going to be like actual wool um this is just synthetic this says acrylic nylon polyester so it's like a tri-blend but it'll work and i'll show you what we're going to do so the first thing i'm going to do i know just from experience what the best spot for me is about 14 inches so i'm going to mark both ends of my string And it's different for every bow. I just, I know where they're, this is going on my Black Widow. And I just got a new string, so that's why we're doing this. The ones I have on it right now are paracord, and they're fine, but I feel like they could be probably a little bit quieter. So we're gonna make some that I definitely know will be quieter. something more natural looking. So take your yarn out. Some people use, I've seen people use, they'll put two nails in a workbench or something like that. Um, I don't really do it that way. So that's 10 wraps. This is uh, just BC, BCY knock point thread. I don't know the exact diameter, but if you get knock point thread on Three Rivers Archery, that's where it is. So you got your pair of pliers, go around there. And it's important that you can get this off of here because I don't cut mine until they're on the, the string. So, and I'm actually gonna do these just because I want some more color in there. I'm gonna put a little bit. Of that black yarn in there. So that's just, I just make an overhand and I get it right in the center. And then I tighten it down. So. Mm. I got it too tight. So once you got it in the center of your, the center of your yarn, all this is gonna do is make it, give it the round, that real round shape. If you don't do this and you put them in, you put all of them in there individually, it will, uh, they won't turn out as round as you want them. So right there where you tied it, it gives it like that. It gives it a good a good spot to bite in your string because what you're gonna do from there, I can find my mark. Is split your string. It's harder on a three color. This is a three color string, so. Separate your string and then put it right there. 
where you did your thread tie off. And it's still in a loop. It's still, I still haven't cut it yet. That's the, we're not gonna do that until we get tension on it. And it's, um, it's in the bow. Do the same thing again. I guess it's better if you got two nails because you can just, when you cinch down on it in the center, you can just pull it off of your two nails if you're using like finishing nails. If these pliers weren't rubber handle pliers, they would, um, it'd be easier to slip off of there. These knots, doesn't matter. You can just use an overhand knot. It's not gonna matter. What matters is you get it tight and, and it bunches those fibers down. If not, when you put them in your string, these don't have anything tied in the center, so they're actually kind of square looking. They don't look like a perfect circle. Um, if you can tie them down, it'll give it that perfect circle. It'll actually look like a puff. Puffball. And this is a brand new string, so I'm gonna give it. I shoot that bow at a seven and seven eighths brace height. I'm gonna give it about an eight and a half because I think it's gonna settle. And I also think that I'm gonna go up in brace height to try to make it a little quieter. I think if I were shooting closer to an eight or eight and a half, that um, the bow would be a little quieter. All right. So now we got them in there. Both of them are in there. I'm gonna unstring my bow and uh, put the string back on there. Okay, so I've got it. This is what they look like in, this, in the string. So now you've got a, now that you've got some tension on it, you're gonna go back, trim off this, this cord, this knot point, sort of get everything even. And then basically you need to Get all, capture all these loops. And you'll know pretty quickly if there's any that you miss because they won't fray. They'll just stay in a loop. When you go to shooting these, you're gonna have stuff floating around everywhere. You shoot it outside in the yard, you'll see. It's like a, a lint bomb. If you don't live in Texas, do this in your garage. All right. Capture all these little loops that you made. 
and just cut them open. So what you're left with, what you're left with is sort of a shaggy looking, whatever you want to call this. Cut that in two short. And if you see, if you notice, they're a little bit longer. Kind of pull them, and even them up. Because when you start shooting the string in, it's just gonna, it's gonna twist that puff, puff ball, which would, makes it turn around, and it's really gonna have a hold of them. This isn't, these aren't like the, um, like the, the paracord ones. They're kind of like the fur ones. It really gets tangled and really gets caught in the string wax. But um, I'll go shoot this outside, and then I'll show you a little bit what it looks like after it's been shot. So this is just about 10 shots. They'll continue to just get more and more frizzy and puffy. It would look really good if you could find like two different colors of yarn and then get that offset color. So they would be, you know, I guess you could just, they could be all brown, it would look fine. But um, that it is a little bit quieter. It works to my, in my opinion, a little bit better than just having the paracord, but uh, that's what they look like, kind of frizzed out and they'll just get puffier the more you shoot. Um, and that was 10 wraps. So 10 wraps would make, I don't know, when you snip the ends. I don't know, I can't think. I'm, I'm going like 20. It would make 20 strands of uh, cord. I guess you could go on a, the, the problem is the more you, the more you go up, the bigger gap is gonna split your, your string. So even when I'm making, um, when I'm making them out of paracord, I don't I don't do too many. I keep them pretty minimal. It doesn't take much to make a big difference in string noise, and you can actually get too big and start. Um, I mean, you start slowing your. All you're doing then is just slowing your string down. And if they do get wet, and you you can try to pluck them a little bit to get the water off of them while you're hunting. But I've seen some of those ones when they get really big. It really makes a big difference and you can miss an animal or something like that shooting in the rain so um if it weren't for this bow being a little bit louder i would just stick with paracord on my long bows and stuff like that it's usually paracord but um anyways if you want to make your own this thing was this roll of yarn it was 550 but i think it was 50 percent off so i paid about two dollars and fifty cents for enough yarn to make a thousand of these things i don't know it's way too much yarn. I'll have that forever. I've got some red yarn that I made some red ones out of. It's probably 10 years old and still making them out of that. I actually want red on this bow. But um, one little roll of a couple bucks can make you endless amounts of these. Every time you buy a new string, you can throw some on there. But uh, And they even make camo yarn that would come out. If you wrapped it enough, I guess it would come out and these would be multicolored. But uh, anyways... That's the easiest way I know to make some homemade string puffs.